Hey guys, so we're back with the CO2 laser cutter engraver that I built uh, in a previous video. If you haven't watched the build, then I suggest you do. It's quite lengthy, but interesting. Um, and I have changed my setup a little bit because today we'll be focusing on how to mark metal and how to mark glass with your laser cutter and, or engraver. Now, obviously, uh, starting out, you need a powerful laser. So this is a 50 watt laser. And these are some examples of the results that you can get. So these are some nice pictures and um, that's pretty permanent. Obviously, if you wanted it more permanent, you can put some epoxy or clear resin and then this will never come off. And this is an example of marking on glass. And interestingly enough, you don't need that solution um, that you use for metal to mark glass. You can actually just stick this right in the laser cutter and engraver and just start uh, laser engraving this. Now I'll get to glass in a second, but first I want to go over my setup and then uh, go to the metal process before I get to this. One of the first things you might notice is that this laser doesn't have a nozzle. Now there's a good reason for this. When I try to work on multiple projects, I have to take this off the workbench so the entire laser has to go somewhere else. And when I move the laser, inevitably these mirrors always get moved just a little bit and I have to constantly readjust the laser so it hits the mirrors dead on. And I'm not doing big parts with this laser and I'm just doing small stuff. And so whenever I bring it back to the workbench and the mirrors are off and I have to constantly realign it, it gets a little annoying. I had to take the nozzle off. Usually this nozzle would be on the laser, of course, and the laser would have to go through that hole and down to the workpiece. Um, but I took it off because the laser was simply just missing that hole and constantly realigning it is really annoying. So I decided to take it off and instead of having an aquarium um, air pump connected to it, I just substituted it for this bigger fan and it just works fine. Um, I actually like it better this way. In fact, when you're marking metal or when you're marking glass, um, it doesn't create a lot of fumes at all. You only have to be worried about that when you're say burning wood or anything else that creates a lot of smoke. Now I've also changed a few things on the circuit side. And one of the most valuable changes to that is with this flyback transformer. Um, getting this thing isolated is a big deal. Now the way I did that was um, simply take the leads of the flyback, cut them down to the shortest possible length they can go, and then dowsing this entire section of the flyback uh, with hot glue to insulate the pins from each other. Basically pouring in enough hot glue to make it level with the edge of this case. And, um, and then I just, as an extra precaution, uh, wrapped it around with some electrical tape, as you can probably notice. Um, I also replaced the thin wire that was previously on this flyback. Now you can see a nice red wire, and it's actually the same type of wire that's used on the other end. And so I know that wire is for sure rated for the voltage this is putting out. And now I have no leaking high voltage, and, and it's great. And as soon as I started to run this laser with uh, the flyback isolated like this, it ran so much more smoother. The computer had zero problems uh, with running any G-code and it wouldn't have um, almost any input-output errors at all. Um, it could do long prints more um, smoothly and I would be even comfortable to leave the room and not have to babysit the laser while it's doing its thing. So um, isolating the high voltage really brought out confidence um, in this machine. And this is previously because um, the high voltage would leak out because it was not insulated well enough and it would just mess with the low voltage uh, stuff and it would cause the laser to just stop whatever it's doing in the middle of um, an engrave or, or, or burn. And it would be extremely stressful to um, leave this machine alone to do its thing. So the only other change being that I'm using a new MOSFET for the switch 
that switches the 12 volts on to power the laser um, rather than using that tiny MOSFET that I was previously using. Um, and it just works much better. Um, it's all on the same heat sink and it's very convenient. Uh, consequently, that heat sink gets extremely hot and so that's why I need to add a fan. Today we're going to be preparing this scrap sheet of steel that's um, 8.5 by 7.5 inches or 19 by 21 centimeters. I'm going to be using this Surmark solution. It's LMM6000 black and this is specifically designed for most metals. Um, you can do this on stainless steel, iron, copper, aluminum, and uh, many others. This 25 gram bottle cost me about $45, so they are pretty expensive, and especially if you're going for an aerosol can, uh, that can be upwards of over $100, but they do come in a concentrated solution. So after shaking well, um, you add one part of this solution with two parts of denatured alcohol, and you can cover a large area with just a small amount of this stuff. For the alcohol, I just use 70% isopropyl alcohol, and that works just fine. For the mixing and the dilution, I'm using just this plastic vial and a paintbrush. So that's one milliliter of the Surmark solution. Now I'm going to add two milliliters of this rubbing alcohol. And now I'm just mixing everything together with the paintbrush. Before you put your solution on the metal itself, you have to make sure that the surface of your metal is not contaminated in any way. Um, if it has any oils on it, then it may jeopardize the way the Surmark solution bonds with the metal. You can use acetone, but I'm using rubbing alcohol, the same alcohol that I used in the solution, to clean this plate. Now once the surface is cleaned and prepped, you have to make sure not to touch the surface with your hands because any oils that are on your hands could get on the surface and then you won't have a good bond between the metal and the solution. This solution is very runny, so I use that to my advantage and tip the metal while also using the brush to move it around the plate in an even fashion. I then dry it quickly with a hot air gun, but a hair dryer works just as well. Now that looks like a nice even coat. Keep in mind that the thinner your application, uh, the more faint that your image will be. The thicker you apply this stuff, um, you risk your laser having trouble bonding this to the metal, and thus your image may not even stick where you laser marked it out. And I also want to stress that I'm saying laser marking instead of laser engraving. Because laser engraving implies that you're taking material off to form your image on the metal. This is laser marking because you are actually bonding a material uh, to the metal. So you're actually adding material to the metal. If you don't prep your surface, apply too much solution, or your laser isn't focused well enough, then you may have these kind of results. These are all previous attempts and I kept them to show you uh, what it might look like if you don't have the proper settings. Now you see that um, this image might have come out looking okay, but once you wipe that off, it just disappears. It's not supposed to do that. It's supposed to stick on even after you wiped it off. Even these letterings over here, they come off just as easily. And as you can see, a properly applied image is very difficult to wipe off. Now when you're designing something in the software, in this case uh, LXMaker version 
Um, you also have to consider the speed and the modes that you choose to operate in. Generally, when you're marking on metal, I like to do it uh, slowly. So instead of a thousand millimeters per minute, I do a hundred millimeters per minute. I keep it on real point. I do um, six lines per millimeter and I do fold line. Now, th these two options are kind of important. So through trial and error, I found that fold line is better than line by line for this kind of stuff because fold line creates more complete paths for the laser to follow um, and, and mark this image out compared to line by line, which what it does is uh, make it so the laser um, is on for a very short period of time when you're working with thinner details and it's on for a longer period of time when it's working with uh, thicker details like the ears or the nose here. So to summarize what you're doing here, you're just giving the laser more time to properly bond the Surmark solution with the metal, creating for a better print. So one final thing that I do before I start um, laser marking this out is I grab a ruler and quickly just check to see if the uh, lens is two inches um, above the surface piece here. And I do that because at two inches, I know that I have a correct uh, tight focal point. And in this case, I have a two inch focusing lens. And what that means is that at a distance of two inches, you'll have a tight focal point. And so that's why I'm measuring out two inches of distance between the lens and the workpiece so I have a nice tight focal point that can um, mark the image out properly. So just out of curiosity, I tried the same process with glass and it worked surprisingly well. The laser is actually etching the glass here, maybe not removing material, but the laser has enough heat to melt the surface of the glass and leave a nice trail or mark. Comparing the bare glass to the Surmark coated one, it looks like the Surmark helped a little bit. Note that this solution is specifically for metal and not glass. And after cleaning it off with just some water, you can see how it looks like. That's not coming off. That's permanent. If you want to make sure that it stays on there and are scared of it being scratched or, or something, uh, then you can put clear resin or epoxy like I mentioned and this will just stay on there forever. But yeah. Let me know in the comments if you guys want to see more uh, projects with this laser cutter and engraver I built. Or any suggestions on future projects, maybe. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope you learned something. Uh, so just give me a thumbs up to let me know that you like this vid. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.